What's going on everybody? You have Tone here back with some more Draft League content. This time I'm bringing you guys week 5 of season 3 of the PBAL, where this week the Miami Malin Marlins are taking on the Rome Empoleons coach by Aaron. And you'll notice that first and foremost that I did mention week 5, I skipped over week 4, and the main reason for that is unfortunately we ended up taking a forfeit win in my week 4 game. I was scheduled to play against uh, Merrill and his Slovenia Slow Bros, but unfortunately um, things came up on his end that he couldn't, um, he didn't have the time to play our match, so we ended up taking a forfeit 3-0 win in that regards. So we are currently 4-0 on the season heading into this matchup against Aaron, who is currently 1-3. This is also a division matchup, so we will have to play him again sometime again in the regular season. Um, as you see the team that he ended up bringing in this game um, with the Claydol, Thunderous Dirian, uh, Clefable, Politoed, Blaziken, and Mecha Scizor. He ended up making a couple of changes to his team actually. Um, he didn't really go off to the start he had envisioned and he made some adjustments. He dropped the Mega Sceptile or Mega Altaria, one of those mons, and picked up Mega Scizor. He made some trades and picked up Politoed, Kingdra, and I believe Cresselia, um, which obviously didn't end up coming in this matchup. So yeah, I had to deal with Rain plus Mega Scizor and a bunch of other threats like Thunder Hysterion with the potential of Rain under his disposal. So Thunder became a really, really big problem in terms of building. But nonetheless, I do feel like the team I ended up bringing in this matchup would benefit me in the sense that I feel like I prepped for everything he could have potentially brought, um, more or less. Um, so just to quickly run down the team that I ended up building for this game. Uh, first off is my Assault Fest Needle Queen with Poison Jab, Ice Punch, Fire Punch, and Earth Power. Uh, Earth Power was mainly just there for Heliolus, which he also had, but he didn't end up bringing. And I guess it also hits the uh, Blaziken too, but Blaziken already gets two with KOI Poison Jab, so I didn't really care that much about it. Uh, so mainly Needle Queen's role is to just basically check the Thunder Hysterion and keep that thing from potentially winning in the late game. Uh, and then I have my Tapu Koko, which is Ferium Z with Calm Mind, Roost, Thunderbolt, and Dazzling Gleam. Basically, my way of wearing down is his electric responses with the Claydol and the Thunder Hysterion. If I get up a Calm Mind boost, I could probably blow something back with a plus one uh, Twinkle Tackle, and then Thunderbolt just hits everything else on his team. Then I have a Cobra Berry Necrozma with Sword Stance, Photon Geyser, X Scissor, and Heat Wave. Heat Wave was mainly my way of luring in Mega Scissor because I originally didn't have Heat Wave, I originally had Moonlight. Uh, X Scissor was for the Cresselia as also double as a means of hitting the Sneasel, which he also had but didn't bring, which explains why I have Cobra Berry on this Necrozma. Then I have my specially defensive Ferrothorn with Toxic, Leech Seed, Power Whip, and Protect. Um, my way of dealing with his Kingdra with rain support. And also my way of trying to catch the Cresselia on the switch with Toxic. And then hopefully the Leech stall, um, Toxic stall that thing down if I'm able to do so. Then I have my mixed defensive Rindo Berry Swampert with Stealth Rock, Earthquake, Ice Punch, and Toxic. Uh, my other means of dealing and weakening the Thunder Hysterion and the Claydol, whatever, with um, Ice Punch. Maybe you want something like Grass Knot, it also helps against Grass Knot Heliolus, Grass Knot cover, Grass Coverage in general for the most part. And then lastly is my Life Orb Lone Raichu with Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Psy Shock, and Grass Knot for the Claydol. Everything else gets hit pretty doggone hard by Alolan Raichu's dual stab. So in terms of a lead matchup for me, I felt like my overall best lead would be my Needle Queen, just because of the fact that if he decides to lead up with his Stealth Rockers, which is basically just the Claydol and the Clefable in this case, I can Ice Punch to look for the Claydol, potentially to a KO that thing if it's offensive, and if he loses up with, um, the Clefable, I can deal with that with Poison Jab, and if he wants to pivot into the Mega Scissor, I can weaken it with Fire Punch, so that was pretty much my general idea of my, um, that was pretty much my game plan. Uh, try to weaken the um, checks to my double electric types with my Needle Queen. Everything else 
and then try to win in the end game with my own Raichu. So he's going to end up leading off with his Kleido as I'm running up with my Nido Queen. And while it may have been in my best interest to keep health on my Nido Queen, I'm just going to click Ice Punch here as he's just going to go for the Earth Power because I'm a, I'm a Salt Vest Nido Queen that's going to do nothing to my Nido Queen. I am going to end up getting a crit with the Ice Punch, which means I will be able to kill it with the next. Um, for the next ice punch, he's gonna earth power again, get myself under half HP, um, half health, so I ice punch again to knock out the Claydol, so, um, uh, so that's one major threat, um, that's one means of my electric, um, core dealt, um, one stops my electric core already down turn two, so in comes the Polito here, revealing he's not, a uh, Drizzle. Which I found interesting. He was water absorb or something along those lines for my Greninja potentially. So he is going to go click Skull. I'll make the offensive play pivot into my Tabu Koko. He's going to stay in here as I go for a Calm Mind here, guaranteeing I'm going to live the uh, the next hit, the next Skull from this Polito barring a crit. So I eat that, I eat that hit up. So. I'm actually going to end up roost. I'm going to, I'm going to go for the roost here. I could have calm minded again because I knew it could have took one more. But at the same time, I didn't want to risk him um, potentially critting my Polito, critting the Polito critting my Coco with the uh, next skull. So it makes it play out into the Thunderous Theory. And I'm just going to fire off my Ferium Z here. And I'm thinking, okay, if this thing has no bulk investment, this thing is just going to drop to this plus one uh, Twinkle Tackle from my Tapu Koko. So I think this is the first time I actually got to use my Z Crystal with my uh, Tapu Koko. But as you're going to see, it's going to end up living. Um, and I believe this was revealed later on that this ended up being an Assault Vest uh, Thunder Asterion. But nonetheless, I am going to knock out the uh, Thunder Asterion with the following Dazzling Gleam. I get a useless crit there. But nonetheless, the Thunder Asterion is down. And Alola Raichu is looking more and more incredible as the game goes on here. In comes the Blaziken here. And I'm thinking the way he sent it out may be thinking it's up for the Scarf um, Blaziken. But nonetheless, I am going to go out into my Swamper here. As he's actually going to reveal the Fiery Z. So, good bluff on Aaron's part to um, bluff the scarf, but he's actually going to reveal to be Z Sunny Day. So, had I stayed in and Thunderbolted, that thing would have been pr pretty much dead. Um, but nonetheless, there, I am Rendo Berry, so even if he goes for the fire with a solo beam here, he's going to absorb some light. But unfortunately for him, I am going to pop my Rendo Berry, and his solo beam is going to bounce off my Swamper here. Well, uh, in, a liter in a, a literal sense, but I, I am still going to take over half from that solar beam, and this earthquake is just going to go and take out the Blaziken. So yeah, already up six to three. Swamper picking up its I think third kill of the season. Nonetheless, he goes out into his Mega Scizor here, and I believe he is just going to fire off the U-turn. I think I just I'm going to sack off my Swamper here just and go for another earthquake. Yeah, so yeah, he goes for a U-turn here, thinking he's going to kill me. Um, luckily for me, I do live on 26. And in comes the Clefable. And I believe it is. Yeah, I go for Earthquake here just to try to get some damage off on the Mega Scizor. Um, so I did a decent chunk to the um, Clefable. I don't know if this thing is unaware or not. Uh, but even if he is, Photon Guys from my, from my Necrozma is going to um, bypass... Be unaware anyway, so I'm just gonna get on my rocks and then he's gonna go for the moon blast and then I let him take down my uh, Swampert here. So Swampert already did its job, it took out the Blaziken and got up rocks um, to get some more chip damage off on his team. I go on the top of Coco here, I don't really remember why I did this to be perfectly honest. I could just went out into Nido Queen because Nido Queen didn't really serve any purpose in this game because the uh, the Thunderous already dropped. But I do get a snag of para here as he goes for the moon blast, and we're gonna end up living on one HP. So then I'm thinking, okay, well maybe if I do win this game, I could potentially save some differential, and I could probably get some my terrain back up later if he doesn't get up his rocks this turn. So I'm meant to play out into my necrozma here. I see he's gonna go for the another moon blast, and I don't really care. Um, 
too much about that um, Moonblast play. So I'm gonna actually click Sword Stance here because I know for a fact that a neutral Photon Geyser will not kill this Clefable. I have to ensure I get to plus two. So he's gonna fire off another Moonblast here, get some more damage off of my Necrozma. And now I'm gonna fire off the Photon Geyser here and guarantee knock out this, um, this Clefable. Um, blow this thing back with the Photon Geyser. Down goes the Clefable, and we're now up five to two. In comes the Mega Scizor, and here is where I make the um, reveal the uh, Heat Wave this turn as he goes for the Bullet Punch, try to knock me out. Unfortunately, he doesn't. I go for the Heat Wave. We connect it, but unfortunately, we're not going to kill the Mega Scizor with the Heat Wave. So then I'm thinking, what if he bullet punches me again, try to knock me out? So I'm, I'll make a play out into my third thorn and hope he doesn't click Roost here. But luckily, he does click Bullet Punch here. And he's going to do nothing, essentially nothing to my third thorn. And the, the Iron Bars are going to take out the Mega Scizor here. So third thorn picking up the kill via Iron Barb's damage, and all he has left is Politoed against two Electro-types, a Ferrothorn, a Queen, and a Necrozma. He reveals the HP Flyer, but I am packing the Yakaberry on this Ferrothorn as I go for the Power Whip, and um, we're actually going to knock out the, the Politoed here, so we're going to end up winning this game 5 nothing. and I'm it's, it was, this was a little bit this was a little bit of a fast-paced game, not going to lie, but I was actually kind of, I wanted, I was a little bit sad at the end because I was actually hoping that Politoed would live the, um, the Power Whip because what I would have did there, if they had lived the Power Whip, I would have gone out into my Alolan Raichu on the, on the, um, Hidden Power of Fire or Scald, whatever. He couldn't take me out in one hit and then I let my Alolan Raichu at the last kill because had that scenario had come up, then every Pokemon on my team would have picked up one kill in the match, and that would have been fantastic. But nonetheless, though, Loma Raichu did not get to hit the field in this game. Uh, this, this is just a very fast-paced game, as I mentioned, a very well-rounded uh, game by every Mon on my team that ended up hitting the field. Everybody got it, getting at least one kill with Therothorn picking up the last two kills in the match via Iron Barbs and Power Whip, so yeah. Uh, GG to Aaron, that was a really fun game, uh, a faster game than I expected to play, to be perfectly honest here. Um, it has some really interesting sets, the uh, No Drizzle Polito did throw me, bar throw me for a loop, um, call me off guard for sure, but nonetheless, we did manage to come away with the W, we are now 5-0 and on the season after this win and hopefully we look to keep up the momentum heading towards the midpoint of the regular season so yeah that's gonna be it from me i hope you guys did enjoy i apologize this is a little bit of a faster paced um uh match than all my previous ones but nonetheless uh, i hope you guys did enjoy it nonetheless if you did for you to leave a like drop a comment click subscribe button all that good stuff and yeah that's gonna be it from me again hope you guys did enjoy and until the next time this is tone signing out for now peace out